Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see everybody here. How are, how are all the faithful people doing? Amen. What a great decision you made to, to get up and get to the house of the Lord. And we're blessed to have everybody together. And when we're pulling together, wow, awesome things can happen. Angel and I have said over the years that we're both, um, how do I say this? Well, we're kind of hard-headed and, and um, stubborn. We like things our way. How many relate to Angel and I? And when we're pulling against each other, it is not good. We're butting heads. It's not good. But when we're pulling together, wow, awesome things can happen. And so we talked last week about the spirit of unity that the Holy Spirit brings into our hearts and to our minds. The Holy Spirit wants to do great works in your life, great work in your family, as well he wants to do it in the church. He wants to do that work in the church. And so when we will cooperate with the Holy Spirit and cooperate with one another as the Spirit of God fills us to think as he wants us to think and give like he wants us to give and go like he wants us to go, wow, wonderful things can happen in the kingdom of God. And so I just pray for this year that we walk in unity of the Spirit and God manifests himself. I'm, I know it's going to happen. How many would agree with me that it's going to happen? Amen. The Bible says we're two or th- uh, agree on two or three things. Any, any two people agree on this, it will happen. And so we, there's power in agreement. And so we agree with the Holy Spirit. We agree with the word of God for a great 2024 for you, for your family, for our church family. Amen. Well, we're starting a new series this morning, here at the first of this month, February, still the beginning of this year. And I want to call this series a foundational series. Everybody say foundations. Our foundation is so important. If your foundation isn't sure, eventually you're going to have problems. And the Bible teaches a lot about foundations. So in this series, I want to teach on four subject matters that the Bible has much to say about, and they all start its four F's. And I'm going to start this morning with being grounded in the faith, the faith of Jesus Christ. Next week, I'm going to talk about family, and these are mega themes. And so when I talk about family, it's going to be your family, your marriage if you're married, your relationships, our family. It's going to be some principles that are found in God's word that will found you properly on something that's so important to a good life and the life that God has for us, and that's family. And then we're going to talk about uh, our finance. And again, finance from God's perspective. The world has an idea, but what does God say of how he wants to bless us, and he wants us to be able to be a blessing. And I believe it will be uplifting and encouraging us on something that is so powerful, but when it's done God's way, God can bless it and multiply it, and it will be a phenomenal Uh, teaching and lessons to just help us to do it God's way. And then last, I'm going to talk, believe it or not, about fitness. Everybody say fitness. The Bible has a lot to say about fitness, that your body is the temple of the Lord. And if your body is all broken down, how can you then do the will of God uh, with your life in your family? So we're not going to talk about, you know, doing push-ups and sit-ups up here, um, although obviously that is part of it. But about our temple and our attitude, and it'll all flow together. And so four important topics that will really help you move into 2024 in a strong living way. So we're starting this morning with the most important pillar, the, the, the founding block, the block, not a block, but the block that we need to found our lives on, that we need to build our life upon, and that's our faith in Jesus Christ. So, how, the question then that I ask us this morning as we begin this is, how am I going to build my life? It's a blank canvas. 2024 is a blank canvas. How am I going to proceed? What are my priorities? What am I going to focus on? I would tell you this morning, one of the worst things we can do is just live our life to be reactionary. One of the greatest steps you'll take in your life 
is not reacting, but proactive. In other words, you're planning, you're believing, you're putting a plan together. If you do what you've always done, you will get what you've always gotten. So God, speak to us to help us to plan and be proactive, to look, God, what are your plans for my life? I want to cooperate with you, and let's do something in 2024, a blank canvas. How am I going to spend my time? What am I going to put my time into? What am I going to commit to? Without question, in front of each one of us are many noble pursuits that we could do this year. Noble pursuits we could do in our life. Investments, opportunities for our life. The reality is many come calling. Much comes calling for our time, for our energy, for our resources. But this morning it begs the question. 2024 in your life begs the question. What am I going to invest in? How should I invest? What is important? What is most valuable for desiring my commitment of my life energies and my time? I want to read a key text this morning found in Mark chapter 8. And Jesus actually answers this massive question for us. He teaches us a lesson. He teaches us the truth. Mark chapter 8, 34 and 37. Mark chapter 8 is a very interesting, phenomenal phenomenal chapter. Go home and read the whole chapter this afternoon. You'll be blessed before the Super Bowl. This will fill you more than the Super Bowl, I promise you. Come on, somebody. Jesus summoned the crowd along with his disciples. Had them gather around. He said, come here, I'm going to teach you something. Come on in close here. He said to them, if you truly want to follow me, you should at once completely disown your own life. You must be willing to share my cross and experience it as your own as you continually surrender to my ways. For if you let your life go for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, you will continually experience true life. But if you choose to keep your life in your will and your way for yourself, you will forfeit what you try to keep. Verse 36 says, For what use is it to gain all the wealth and all the power of the world with everything it could offer you at the cost of your own life? And what could be more valuable to you than your own soul? Then, calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. Verse 36 says, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? Is there anything worth more valuable than your soul? So Jesus is teaching a very, very important lesson. He's saying that you have the most valuable thing in all the world inside of you. You have the most valuable thing in all the world right inside of you. In fact, he's very emphatic. And he says, your soul and what's inside of you, what's inside of me, is more valuable 
than all the riches in all the world. Your soul is worth more than Warren Buffett's portfolio. You're richer than Warren Buffett because of your soul. So Jesus is emphatically teaching a very big lesson here for his disciples and followers. And he says to them, what can you give then in exchange for this valuable peace? Now, around us, and in our culture, in our world, there's lots of messaging, lots of chaos in our time and culture. And it's easy to get caught up into what the masses are doing and what the masses value and everybody around you thinks and what everybody else is doing. Let me know that's the truth. But you have to know that The investment strategy of the world is different than the investment strategy of us Christians. The world tries in its best way to work from the outside in, thinking that somehow this world is going to give me a fix on the inside that will truly make me happy. The outside world will do it for me. And so the whole investment strategy of our culture in the world around us is outside. Nothing inside. That's, ladies and gentlemen, that's why we're having so many problems in our culture and society. We might have a lot of riches out here, but we're broke on the inside. We don't know how to be nice to our neighbor. We don't know how to do good deeds. We don't know how to show kindness because we're told, look out for yourself and get as much as you can get and you will be happy. It's you first, me time. It's all about me. But our investment strategy as Christians is so much richer and so much greater. The world's investment strategy is temporal. It's just for today. It's short term. It it does not last. It's not forever, and it's not high quality, and it's not the best investment. It's here today and gone tomorrow, but not God's investment, not eternal investment, not in the kingdom of God. It is eternal. It lasts forever and ever and ever. Mark 4, 19 speaks to us even today. This verse from 2,000 years ago rings so true today in our time and in our lives and our culture. It says, but all too quickly, the message that I'm teaching this morning, the message of Christ is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth. Or the Bible says the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things. So no fruit is produced. So what the Bible talks and teaches is orderly, living in priority, living in order, in proper order. The Bible teaches about being blessed. The Bible teaches about having so much that you can bless your neighbor and bless those around him and around you and be a blessing. So it's not saying don't have wealth. It's saying right priorities, right priorities. We, we wonder why. Suicide. I think if my memory serves me correctly, there's been at least two and maybe three suicides on the University of River Falls campus this year. Four. Four, brothers and sisters. Stress. Worry. Worthlessness. Anxiety. What's the problem? Can I tell you something? The outside does not fix the inside. The outside does not fix the inside. The Bible says it so much more profoundly than I can this morning. In Galatians chapter 6, 
in verse 8, it says, For those who live to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. What are you investing in? What are your priorities? It's easy to get wined and dined and think of the temporal and think of just tomorrow, but not think of eternity and not think of 20 years or 50 years or 30 years. And your investment can be so, so wrong. But the Spirit of God speaks to us this morning to center our heart, to get our heart right so that we're investing properly. In our culture and society, we live poor on the inside because we think it's rich on the outside that's going to make us happy and going to bring us joy. But listen to the word of God. True richness comes from the inside, from the condition of our soul. In 1 Peter, the writer talks about the hidden man of the heart where true joy, where true gladness, where true happiness, where true life comes from. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 from the Passion Translation says, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. Guard your inside man above all else for it determines the course of your life. Another translation says, above all, guard the affections. This is the Passion Translation. Above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being. Mm. For where there flows, from there flows the wellspring of life. We need this morning to see That true living and true life, the value of life starts from the inside, from our soul, the condition of our heart. It starts there. That's the foundational stone and moves from there. So I want to give you three truths to guide your life, to guide your life in 2024. Number one, have a soul consciousness. I don't even know if this is a proper use of that word. Have a soul consciousness. Mark chapter 8, 17 through 18. Jesus knew what they were saying, so he said, why are you arguing about having no bread? Don't you know or understand even yet? Are your hearts too hard to take it in? You have eyes you can't see. You have ears You can't hear. Don't you remember anything at all? Yeah, just this chapter is so interesting. I'm going to remember the story of the loaves and the fishes, right? People were hungry. I believe there was a total of 4,000 people in that neighborhood. That's a lot of people. And Jesus told his disciples that they were hungry because they had been there all day and they ran out of food. And they, didn't have, they had all eaten their lunch and now it's supper time and they have no food. So Jesus said, feed them. <laughs> and his disciples were like, okay. So many lessons in that chapter. When you give what you have, God can multiply it. We look at ourselves and we say, no way. But they had Jesus in their midst. They should have known, my God, all things are possible. So he does a miracle. He feeds them all. And then if you read the story, there's like baskets upon baskets upon baskets of leftovers. Why? Because God is always more than enough. 
So then the scene changed and they went across the sea, I believe, and the next day in same chapter, same passage there in 8. And they ran out of food again. <laughs> like the next day. And they got all worried and were concerned about food. How many know we soon forget that we have the master in our boat? We have the master in our life. So they were upset again. And, and that's where Jesus in verse 18 says, come on, guys, I did it before. I can do it again. He says, what, what are you worried about? You got the master of the universe right with you. Quit worrying about these little things. And that's when he said to him, you have eyes you can't see. You have ears you can't hear. Don't you remember anything at all? It's so easy for us to forget. It's so easy for us to look around us and look around our surroundings and forget about our souls. Worry about the things of this life. This church should be full with two services right now. I believe it's still going to happen, but people forget. And the Bible says that the pursuit of riches and the deceitfulness of this life and the seed doesn't grow and then they don't stick with it and they're not in the kingdom of God. So my prayer for us as believers, as Christians, as a church, that for this whole year, we have a soul consciousness. <laughs> that we realize we're not, we are not deceived and get off track and get so busy that we can't show up for church, that we, we don't fellowship and we're not a part of a small group and, and we're just doing our own thing and making money and we get wound up in this world and we're hooked into this world and we realize, we'll realize, man, we were investing in the wrong thing. I was at a funeral this Friday and I saw people I hadn't seen in 40 years. And I thought, man, do they ever look old? I mean, I've been in a situation like that. But this funeral was for an elder in the church I grew up in. And one particular person who I knew, he drove 12 hours for this funeral. Because the guy who laid in the casket had made investment, eternal investment into him. I drove and greeted his widow and said, I'm here to pay my respect for someone as a little boy who took time for me. No one asked how much money he died with. No one asked if he still had the farm. He was a farmer. All we remember is the eternal. And I seen him laying there in the casket, the shell of the person I knew as John. My mind got to thinking, wow, how much happy he must be. Eighty nine years old. And one of the things I remember from this guy is in services like we had this morning, 
he had this little giggle. And the Holy Spirit would start moving and the joy of Jesus would be in the house. And he would just clap his hands and giggle in the joy of the Lord. Old tough farmer. What are you investing in? What are you investing in? What am I investing in? Jesus taught us, he said, there's something inside that's really, really worthy of your time and attention. To have ears to hear and eyes to see. To have a soul consciousness. You're awake to the value of your soul. You're awake to the value of the precious cargo that you have inside. That you are not an animal. You are a human being. That sexuality matters. That all these things Angel and I were discussing yesterday. We had some time in the car together. We're talking about this world and, and the things that are going on in this world. And we're losing the sacred thing. And, and, and our culture is, is, is just fixated on just becoming animalistic. Do I have a witness of that? Brothers and sisters, we are not animals. We are human beings. We are created in the image of our God. And there's precious cargo that is going to live forever somewhere on the inside of you. And all these things really do matter. I'm different than the cow that's in the pasture. I'm different that's, than the pig that's in the barnyard. They have their purpose, but that's not my purpose. I'm created in the image of God. I have a soul. I have a spirit that is going to live forever. Number two, invest in the inside first and foremost. Remember this, it just doesn't happen. You don't have a good marriage just because it happens and you lucked out, but you have to sow into it. It takes humility. Come on, somebody. It takes patience. It takes kindness. It takes stuff on the inside. It just doesn't happen. Having a great family with kids that serve the Lord and on and on it goes. It, it just doesn't happen. The good life that my elderly brother lived and we buried last past Friday. It just didn't happen. He was intentional about what he was investing in. He was intentional about his schedule. He was intentional about his thoughts. He was intentional about what he did with his life. You got to stack it right. It, it just doesn't happen. The Bible says in Psalm 119, it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. The Bible just doesn't somehow fill your heart like by osmosis, but there's a time where you have to crack the, crack the code and crack the book and, and get into it a little bit. Come on, somebody. And you have to put it in your heart that you might not sin against him. You got to invest. You got to stack it right. It just doesn't happen. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as some is. You guys could have done anything you wanted this morning. You could have been different places. You could have slept in. You could have put another, you could have went out for breakfast instead of coming to church. But the Bible says, if you want to invest properly, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the man as some is, but exhort one another so much more as you see the day approaching. I don't serve God today because my dad took it easy on me every Sunday morning. He said, we're going to church. Every Sunday morning, we're going to church. We went to church on Sunday night. We went to church on Wednesday night. And after 40 years, I showed up at a funeral and I saw people that I hadn't seen in 40 years. And most of them are still walking with the Lord. Because when we were kids, we were taken to church. We were taught in Sunday school. We were raised up in the ways of the Lord. It's investing in the right thing. An investment will always pay out. What are you investing in? 
it's not, it's not doing this because it's something good to do. No, it's an intentional investment. It is on purpose. My heart has been awakened to a consciousness of the Holy Spirit and eternity. And where am I going to be for eternity? You got to stack it right. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Well, it's just church. No, it's not just church. It's something ordained of God. It's something that God says, if you'll invest in this, it's going to pay out. If you'll invest in this, it's going to be a blessing to your family. Come on, somebody. Mm. Why is it? You know, oh, we'll, we'll talk investing and we'll talk money. And man, we will go after that so hard. We will work so hard. We'll work our fingers to the bone. And again, I'm all for investing. I'm all for doing things right with our life and knocking it out of the park in all areas. But why would you do that and miss something that's more valuable in all the world? Why wouldn't we take the same conscious decision? And I'm so proud. I see people in church this morning, man, that you're getting it and you're doing it. God bless you. You're here every Sunday to hear the word of God. One inch of snow, two inches of snow, 20 below, or nice weather like we had, you're here. You made a conscious effort. You are investing in your eternity. You're hearing the word of God. You're stacking it right. And that's just like the big thing. Then we talk about the daily stuff. We're getting to that. Invest. So first of all, having a soul consciousness. Secondly, investing in the inside first. And foremost, if you're feeling a little blue, you don't have to be blue. If you're feeling down, Jesus can pick you up. Maybe hit your knees and say, Lord, help me. Stop scrolling on Facebook and Instagram and pray. And ask Jesus to help you. Ask Jesus to be with you. Why so downcast, oh, my soul, put your hope in God. When I'm investing in the right things, I have hope. When I'm investing in the right things, I can be picked up. When I'm investing in the right things, my attitude changes from a poor me or negative attitude to God's got it and God's going to make a way for me. Matthew six thirty three that bold verse that we all know, but seek first the kingdom of God. That's the right investment, this first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. Lastly, discipline yourself to godliness. Man, every time I go to this gas station over here, they have Hannish donuts. And shh, shh, let me preach. <laughs> That's that sweet roll, I have to say no to it. Because the doctor told me a couple years ago, Matt, you continue on and it's not good. So stop the donuts. If I had it my way, I could eat a donut every day with a cup of coffee in the morning. How many are with me in that foolishness? Thank you. But this is the genius that so many people miss in life. And we really need to hear it for our spirit man, for our natural man. We need to hear this truth right here. Because some people just think you can wave a magic wand and everything will change your life. And we know that being born again is an aha moment where now we're not alone, but we have Jesus and we're saved. But a big part of walking with Jesus after he's so freely given you salvation is to take seriously what he's done in your life. First Timothy chapter four. Seven and eight says, do not waste 
time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. We all want the donuts. But if you're going to live a rich life, you're going to have to train yourself to godliness. You're going to have to say no to your flesh. You're, you're going to have to pray. You're, you're going to have to get into the word of God. Well, I just want it easy, Pastor. Well, this is what I've learned about life. Are you ready? As you stand. You will either have the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. You'll either have the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. And the devil always paints a pretty little picture and tries to get you an appeal to your flesh in many, many ways. And it's a quick hit. It's a quick addiction. It's a quick jolt that our flesh thinks is going to give us life and going to make us happy. But then all too soon, it's gone away and we're right back where we started. Verse 8 says, physical training is good. We're going to talk about having a, a good temple for the Lord in a few weeks. He's not saying exclusively don't, you know, don't do one, but just do this one. But he's saying about a priority here. You can have the most athletic body, muscles popping out everywhere, and have an empty soul. And you're a loser. You'll be the loser. Big muscles and all that's great, but it's not going to give you eternal life. It'll help you live, and it's good. It supports your structure. I'm all for that. Lord, help me. But first and foremost, is something that is more valuable than all the dollars and all the world could ever buy my soul. What can a man give echoes through the halls of history to our time today. What are you giving in exchange for your soul? What, what are you investing in that payout is not eternal and it's going to cost you dearly and it's deceived you. Discipline yourself to godliness. Which speaks that I'm going to have to make choices that are the right investment. I'm going to have to say no to crowding out my schedule so I can't fit God in. I'm going to have to say no to maybe relationships that take me down and take me places I don't need to go anymore. I'm going to have to say no to some things. But you remember this. At the end of the day, and the end comes for us all. You'll have been a wise investor when you put God first in everything in your life. When you've checked on the health of your soul, you've started every day in a relationship with your Lord. When you start to learn the word of God, begin to pray. You begin to associate with God's people. You join a small group and you become accountable. 
and you take this fitness spiritually seriously. You, you, do, you go all the way with Jesus. Put all the effort in there. At the end, you'll be very rich. You'll be very rich. In fact, you'll walk on streets of gold, the Bible says. You're going to own it all. Faith first. Jesus first. His church first. His people first. It's the way we live. We don't date Jesus. We're married to Jesus. We don't date the church. We're married to the church. We don't date the word of God. We're married to the word of God. It's my word. It becomes my word. It is my life. This is my truth. God's truth. Come on, somebody. How's your soul? You need to forgive something? You need to lay something down? Pastor Milan already talked about it a little bit at the beginning of this service. That's okay. I've had to lay donuts down. We all have to lay things down. Don't you for a moment feel condemned. Don't you for a moment feel, I'm just the, I'm just the bad person in the house. No, we're all bad without Jesus. Can we affirm that? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We're the church of former drug addicts, alcoholics, porn addicts, everything. That's what this church is filled with. People who have been there and done that, but now we're saved by God's grace. Somebody said amen. We've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That God loves us all, no matter what we've done, no matter what we've come from. God saves us, and God sets us free, and God makes a change in our hearts and lives. Hallelujah. Praise God. Former meth addicts in this house, former people that have messed it all up like crazy, but we're still standing in the name of Jesus. We're still here because God loves us and God made a way for us. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> I was driving the car with Angel last night and I said, you know what? I'm just convinced my ministry is for the underdog. My, my ministry is for the one who didn't think they could make it and God saved them and God redeemed them. To tell people that God has not given up on them, that God has not forgotten you. Amen. Amen. That's what this church is. Hallelujah. Man, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done with our lives. Thank you, Jesus. I'll pray.